Hey everyone, uh, Josh Thomas here from Rupert and Josh Do Stuff and I'm doing another one of my solo film reviews today in case you were wondering. It's something to do with these box sets and this book sat next to me here. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing Ridley Scott's Alien from 1979 or 78 depending on how much of a stickler you are for release date. Um, so, uh, Alien, it's an iconic movie, it's been out for a number of years, it spawned numerous sequels, comic books, video games and everything, so uh, I'm just going to run over the plot of the first one to those of you, and I hope there are only a few of you that don't know the plot of the original Alien. Um, so, Alien is about a group of interstellar miners uh, aboard the towing vessel the Nostromo, who are awoken from a hypersleep on their way back to Earth after hearing a distress signal from a planet. Upon investigating, a member of the crew is infected with an alien embryo. Upon bursting from his chest in a rather violent manner, it escapes on board the ship, growing to an enormous size and slowly and methodically hunting down and killing each member of the crew. Uh, the film is directed by Ridley Scott, who uh, many will know if they haven't watched this one, uh, from directing the recent effort Alien Covenant and its prequel Prometheus. And uh, is also scored by Jerry Goldsmith, um, who is just tremendous uh, at that. But I'll get into that later on. Uh, the cast uh, is a really strong one. It's a first-time appearance from Sigourney Weaver. Uh, we also have Tom Skerritt, uh, who was in a number of things, but they're escaping me right now. And uh, Yafat Kota, who played the villain in Roger Moore's, one of Roger Moore's Bond outings, Live and Let Die. Um, also Nancy Cartwright. Not Nancy Cartwright, Veronica Cartwright from Invasion of the Body Snatchers and this. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, moving on to a number of points on this. The visuals to this film uh, are going to be the first one to talk about. This film is a terrific looking film. It's definitely got a uh, really individual style. It was mainly designed by the, uh, I think, Swiss. If I'm getting that wrong, I'm really sorry. Uh, artist H.R. Geiger, or Giger, depending on how you pronounce it, he designed the Alien, the Derelict, a number of uh, sets for the movie. And uh, just generally, aside from the, the Geiger stuff, it looks tremendous. The interior of the Nostromo um, and just the exterior stuff is very, very grimy sci fi film, uh, very sort of what Ridley Scott pursues in his sci fi films. Uh, also, look at Blade Runner for that kind of aesthetic that Ridley Scott brings to his movies. Um, for one, I know that the visuals were improved by uh, in a number of the scenes uh, to make the scale seem bigger. Ridley Scott had his uh, his kids in the space. He had miniature space and the kids would, uh, would walk on the set to give them this grander scale, which I think is a really nice filmmaking trick. I think this film is one of the most visually brilliant films, not just of the 70s, but ever. Um, it looks fantastic. Uh, even now, uh, in especially in its Blu-ray transfer, uh, which we had a few years ago now, this, this Blu-ray set's been out for quite a number of years, but it looks great in its transfer, just probably as good as it did back in 1979 when it was... Um, so, the score of this film is composed by Jerry Goldsmith. Uh, to those of you who watch the channel will know that we're quite big Trekkies from our Attack Wing videos and presumably future um, Star Trek videos, and there will be many, I promise you. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith composed the score of this film, was composed Star Trek 1, Star Trek 5... Uh, the score of this film's great. It's a real avant-garde score, really different from what Jerry Goldsmith normally does. There's a lot of really interesting musical cues that aren't part of his usual repertoire. repertoire. Um, and uh, he, not the blaster being from the motion picture, tragically, but a number of horrible sort of razor blades running up violin strings and things like that, especially in the cue, which, uh, the cue, the jockey from the soundtrack. Those of you out there who have the soundtrack in, in any form, go listen to that cue or find it on YouTube. It's somewhere. Um, so yeah, I really recommend the score of this movie. Uh, the legacy that this film has left goes without saying. I mean, Aliens permeated, permeated rather popular culture to an amazing degree through comic books, collectibles, action figures, movies, um, everything. And uh, the reason I'm reviewing this film is because it stands out as one of those movies that still sticks with me now. The first time I watched it, I was 11 years old and I haven't ever taken it off rotation. I watch it at least once a year. It's just an incredible film. I mean, this, you didn't really need a review to tell you this. I don't really think this review is necessarily more. It's more here to just sort of talk about it and gush about it. So to sort of sum up, uh, to those of you out there that haven't seen it, please go and check the film out. 
it's an absolutely tremendous ride. If you know nothing about it, I recommend keeping it that way and going in completely blind because there are some shocks in there. I mean, maybe not so much in, in the, the age of the day, those shocks maybe have diminished slightly, but go and watch it because it's, it's a terrific film uh, that spawned a franchise that varies um, from terrific to terrible, but mostly good. Uh, so from the verdict, this film, I mean, it's one of my favorite films. It's my second favorite film of all time, so it's getting a perfect 10 out of 10 and uh, I recommend everyone go check out Alien. I've been Josh Thomas. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Uh, our channel will follow back if you follow us. So that's a nice incentive. You can follow me on Twitter at deadagain93. And uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye. This new. Um, moving on from that, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm going to talk about the score. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith composed the score for this movie. Uh, for those of you who watch our channel will know that we're quite big Trekkies. He's also the composer behind Star Trek 1 and Star Trek 5. Really interesting composer. Did a lot. He also composed the Stargate score, I believe. No, that was Joel Goldsmith, wasn't it? I messed up. You can edit that one. What can you need a director. Do I need a... What? I'm a director. Now. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> That's rambled. Um, oh, no, I feel I need to restart score there. I will. I'm going to restart score because you can chop it. And I'm not going to. Oh, great. I'm going to look like a right prick, aren't I?